Really enjoy that. Um, this is Scott Jordan. You're you're watching live here at Cellars of Sonoma. I've got Heidi Barrett here showing the La Serena wines. We're tasting the Barrett Vineyard. We're talking about how amazing this wine is and how different it is uh, than the than the actual Napa. Yeah. But again, um, it, it's a little it's friendly up front. It is. No, it's very soft and silky. It's yeah. not it's not a you know punch you in the nose kind of a wine at all. I mean, all of these are. They're really big and rich, and, and what we mean by that really is, you know, really flavorful. But but the balance is very, very silky and, and finessal. So, you know, they're just easy easy to drink and really easy to, to enjoy. So, yeah. Yeah, very, very nice. Uh, beautiful wine, $80 here in the tasting room. And uh, you got to love that. Did you have a question there, Kevin? Notice that the last two wines poured were 05. Do you grow or make wines that better mature than young. I ask because most consumers lack patience and drink high quality wines far too young. That is so true. Wow. So, that's yeah, a great it's question. It's a really good question. And good I, question. Is that yeah. Dan and Iowa? Oh, who was that? Dezel. D-E-Z-E-L. Dezel. Thank you. That was a great question. That is a great question. Great question. Yeah. Actually, um, we do have a little bit of the 05 still in the market. We are just starting to release the 06s for Syrah. For Syrah, I think that it really starts to get great after about five years. And so rather than me release something that's way too young and rely on consumers to age that themselves, which is hard to do. You know, you, you're excited. You want to pull corks as soon as you buy it. Well, you know, you so, know how I age a wine like this in my house? I, I, I leave them like this so I can go like that. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> so really I, kinda, I do that on my end. I kind of hold the wine until I think it's really going to be delicious and show it its best. So for Syrah, it is a little bit of a delay release. They get a couple extra years of bottle age until they go to market where they're really going to show at their best. Um, the Cab release, for example, it's on 07. It's, you know, ready to go. We're just about to release 08. But for Syrah, they really get better with a little bit of extra time. And so I, I, I just do that at my end. I'd rather, I'd yeah. rather wait and have it be really no, and, I, and I think it's better, you know, the... the it's really not fair for the consumer to try to convince them and say, "Well, you really should lay this down for the next five years before you really open no the bottle." One's do it. You know, yeah, or there's very a few. there's a winery in Napa that I won't say their name, but they, but their wines are so tannic that you can't. There's no way you can drink it now. So yeah. what do you? Why, why are you What's doing? The point? Yeah, what is the point? They're just too raw and too young. Yeah. And, and the the trend is to just get them now, out sooner and sooner. I like to I like to age wines as yeah. well. And I really appreciate them, you know, later on. Wine, sure. But but I would like to be able to open a wine at a special moment. Say, you know what, it can age longer, but I can enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, now. but time now, let's let's drink it and enjoy it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so we don't want to miss a wine like this. Yeah. So yeah. it's better when you you know aren't in such a big hurry. Everything's so yeah. rushed these days, and I, I think just everybody, you know. All right, you got the question questions running. Okay, good. Go ahead, Go ahead. fire away, Go Kevin. For it. How long would you say that? That you can hold a Syrah. Sorry, I couldn't. How long? Can, how long can you age a Syrah? Oh well, I think it is probably going to be like a 10 to 15 year wine. Maybe you know, even 12 ish. Maybe it might make 15. I'm not sure if it can last as long as Cab. Um, I have Syrahs in, just that I've been making under this label from 2000, so that's you know 10 years old at this point. Those are still drinking pretty nicely. So we're still kind of learning about really what the timeline is for um, ageability of Syrah. Mm -hmm. Some other countries, we look to them to also see how do their wines age. Like right. I think of Australia, of course, for Syrah and things like Grange, which can age quite well. And I think if yeah. they're made well and the chemistry is appropriate and, and a reasonable pH, then they can age, age quite well. So we're, you know... Nobody knows exactly, and anyone who, you know, really says, oh, yeah, that's a whatever, however many years, really it's kind of a guess, but if you can back it up with something that's in your library, like we've got this 10-year track record now for this brand with Syrah, I know I've got at least 10 years um, out right. of them, so I'm kind of, you know, extending that because they're still kind of going strong, so I'm thinking maybe 12 to 15 even for Syrah, well, whereas the cab, I know it's a 20-year bottle wine. Right. I know it, no, I, it's go. not guessing, yeah. I've got them to prove it, yeah. and I know for sure those are 20 year ones yeah, you know, but I, clearly I, done that. Yeah, yeah exactly but Syrah yeah you, you know if you buy this 06 you've got at least another 5 to 8 years probably because yeah. I've already done the first 5 years of aging for you yeah exactly yeah. and and the other thing that I always another hint that I that I tell folks is this buy a case of wine that you, that you really love 
and enjoy a bottle or two now and then sell her some of that and then bring it out later on. But if you're ever curious and you're thinking, geez, I think I want to taste this wine, it's really best maybe call the winery and they can give you the first hand, as you know, right? I mean, you'd yeah. be able to cl yeah, clearly can, say, look, sit on it. It's not ready or, right. yeah, you're really going to enjoy it, but maybe you pair it up with a bigger meal. Yeah. And, and so yeah. good, take advantage of that. Yeah, take advantage of that. Call the winery up. They'll really know what, what to do. They will. Yeah. Or you can also kind of play with it on your own if you have a case or even six bottles. Just open one every year and... If you find a stage where it's just you can't stay out of it, then I'd say keep going. You know, don't don't wait too long to if you find a little phase where you absolutely love it, keep keep pulling corks, you know, yeah. just over that period of a year or whatever. If and, you, and you find that time. And over the time that we've been open now, um, we've collected library wines and we've got verticals on some of these wines. And so if you want to do some side by side comparisons, yeah. we've got them. And so, you know, take advantage of that. These are very small production wines. They're boutique wines. You're not going to see them everywhere in the in the market. Yeah, um, it's these nice are, that you offer that because that is yeah. kind of a rare chance for people to kind of experiment with that and, and see for themselves up front what the difference is with another year and or And it's two. fabulous to taste yeah. them side by side. It is. It's yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. Did you have a question, Kevin? Yeah. So Dan asked, Heidi, which one of your wines is your favorite? Oh, wow. Wow, that is so hard. Favorite. I know, it is. It I know, is we get that question all the time. I know, I get it I all go, the time. I go, we got 65 too, SKUs in here. What are you kidding me? <laughs> I, I know, give me the meal. Whichever one we're drinking right now, this, this right now, it's this one, of well. course. But, um, yeah, you know, I like different ones for different occasions. I, I really do love that dry Moscat on a hot summer day that is unbeatable, really. Um, right now, the Barrett Syrah is tasting pretty darn good. It is, it is pretty yeah, nice. Yeah, but we've got some other tasty ones I'm eyeing over there yeah. on the counter that we'll get to. So <laughs> it's pretty tough to pick. I kind of just, you know, like uh, eating different foods. You don't eat the same thing for dinner every night. I alternate also what we drink every night. It's just, you know, yeah. variety is truly the spice of life. Well, and I, and, I, and I get the question here all the time. I bet. And my answer is, is a lot like that as well. It really depends on my food. Yeah. If you now, if you're gonna throw me on a desert island, I gotta pick one. I know. Okay. That's hard. I, it's hard, but I, I probably could do that. I mean, I probably grab that. Because uh, <laughs> yeah, it works, right? Yeah, it's a choice kind of island. Okay. Right, <laughs> you guys, you have some new accoutrements. Yeah, there. right. Yeah, we got. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, but the reality is, you, you're right. With the food, really determines the type of wine exactly. that you're gonna have. Um, and some, some wines really need to have the food with it to complement the wine. Mm -hmm. There are some wines, like the San Inez of your Syrah, mm -hmm. that you can sip and enjoy, and All you don't I necessarily know. have to have a meal yeah, with it. And right. I think the Barrett Vineyard it really falls in that category as yeah, well. It can. Um, I think the Napa needs a steak. Yeah, the Napa, you're... you're, you're, you're you got to have ribs or a steak. Yeah, you're going, oh my gosh, that's what are we doing? That's big, yeah. But, but these, are, these are both, you, yeah, you, I agree. Yeah, you just yeah. Drink them. They're so this, nice. is, uh, this, is, this is Heidi's uh, La Serena Cab. Cab is your claim to fame. Um, is it 100% Cab? What would you, what'd you, what'd you no, blend in here? No, it's not 100% Cab. Is this the 07 that you... Uh, uh, no, this oh, is this 6. this is actually 06. Oh, 06. Oh, 06. Okay, great. I love the 06. It's one of my favorites. It's such a... Such a beautiful, beautiful vintage, and often overlooked because people were so excited about 07, which was so highly touted in the press. Right. But you know, right now, 06, 06 I think it's drinking well. a little better even yeah. than the than the yeah, 07, which is a nice one. But man, the 06 is killer. Yeah, so yeah, it's a it's a very layered blend. There are a couple different components of cab that go into this: a little bit of uh, merlot and a little dollop of cab franc. I love and, Cab uh, Franc. Me too. And just Why don't you make a Cab Franc, a small, small production wine, no. a teeny production? Come on. <laughs> no. Come on, a small no production. No, no, oh, no. Oh, I love, I love, I am a, I am a, really? ca I love, love, love Cab Franc. Okay, so next time I'm blending, you should come and taste it on its own because it's, oh, it's, I, pre it's not really a complete wine on its own in most cases. So if you and that's, had, and that's because you really make it a complete wine. I mean, that's a really, that, that's part of that magic of what you do because you yeah. talk about the 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 front of your palate yeah. the mid and the back end right, that's right that's so right. tell them that you yeah you, okay I mean, so yeah this is a good good segue into into that and how um each variety kind of 
strikes your palate at a different different time. And especially with this cab, you really you really really get that very um, dramatically. So think about the beginning, the middle, and the end of tasting a wine. The initial palate, give it a count of two. That's one, two. Mid palate is the three, four, and the finish is five, six. So I'm looking for the complete expression across the palate. You want one, two, three, four, five, six. It should just completely fill in all of those places and flow like silk across the palate and just be really delicious. So Cab Franc is used in a blend as one, two. It's this little pow factor, little initial burst of fruit up front, but on its own, it kind of just falls off a cliff. There's not much middle and there's not much finish. It's a very short wine when you taste it all by itself in its raw form. So a lot of Cab Francs that are in the market are back blended with other things to kind of make them a little more round and full. So while you may like the flavor of Cab Franc, it's probably has some other blending wines in to make to fill in that three, four, five, six is kind of my point. Mostly it's a little initial impact of flavor and that's exactly how I use it in the cab. Merlot is really lush and we've all had, you know, 100% Merlots. They're very silky, very soft. It's a big fat three and four in the middle and sometimes has some five, six as well. It'll have a softer one, two, three, four, five, six, but a really nice layering element. Cab has, you know, the whole ball of wax and you can accentuate the initial palette with that little punch of Cab Franc. So that's kind of how I piece together a blend, this layering approach to, you know, building each of the blocks with like puzzle pieces of my blend. And then when we finally put them together, wow, you get this just complete, beautiful expression of fruit. So... That's, that's what you did here. Yeah, that's what I did oh, here. Oh, man. Yeah, thank oh. you. And, and it really comes together when you think of it in that sense. It really comes together, and it the, the wine, you're looking for the finish, and you've got it. Yeah. And it's just luscious. This and is pouring really well. it just lasts and lasts, and you can just keep tasting it, keep tasting it. It's still there. The flavor wow. impression just goes on and on. Um, oh, man. Yeah, just silky and rich. I love yeah, that. Yeah, it's really a beauty. I, I love Beautiful that one. Beautiful cab. Too. Thank you. So we're going to take a break. This is Scott Jordan. You're watching live here at Cellars of Sonoma. 